By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to make a real Iron Man suit. So Captain America Civil War is my favorite movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I love the airport fight, Captain America and Bucky versus Iron Man. That fight is just awesome as well. It's just chef's kiss, you know, fantastic. Let me know in the comments down below which movie is your favorite in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And when you get your first 3D printer, you feel like Tony Stark making a robot make other things for you. So I had to do a full Iron Man suit. Welcome to Quest for Nostalgia, where I teach how I do all of my 3D printed props and things like that. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make the Mark 46 Iron Man suit. Biggest way to support is patreon.com slash quest for nostalgia. That really helps me fund these projects and keep making the things that I want to make. I'm going to work on daily updates, video suggestions, things like that. Any ways you guys can think of how I can improve the Patreon, please reach out to me. And as always, the like, comment, subscribe, the YouTube things to help this thing get shared. To start building a suit, you need the files. I love the way that DO3Ds looked. You can get any of their files for 20% off with code Q4N20 and it helps the channel out, but their suits just look amazing. The suit took me about a month and a half to two months to print on two different printers. I actually did a video on my channel showing how I oriented the pieces and things like that and kicked off my Iron Man build journey. So you can check that out on the channel if you want to after this video. After everything was all printed out, I had to weld together pieces that I wanted to go together, like the big back piece, the chest piece, the abs, things like that, group them together how they're gonna be. I wish I would have harnessed this suit together very early on, right after I got those pieces together. Instead, I did it later, and you'll hear about when I do that in the process. But yeah, it would have been so nice, honestly, if I got the suit completely wearable this early in the stage. I also have a full tutorial on my channel on exactly how I buckled every single piece and showed my harnessing and the strap system for the entire suit if you want to check that out afterwards. The first step in getting this suit wicked smooth is 80 grit sandpaper. For big open areas, I could use a detail sander to kind of sand over with an electric sander to kind of knock down some of those areas, but I actually use a lot more sponge sanding than anything. I wrap a sheet of 80 grip around an old sanding sponge and use that to kind of get over big areas and also not risk heating an area up too much or, you know, kind of losing a little bit of detail. Then I'd rip the sandpaper into smaller strips and fold it up to get into nooks and crannies and things like that that I could not reach with the sanding sponge. And then for detail lines, I used a set of files to be able to sand in between lines and cracks to make sure that detail really popped. Doing a full suit is a lot of work. It took me about a week and a half to sand 80 grit. I did about four to six hours a day. So it took a long time to sand. And that was just one stage of sanding. It's hard to understand how much work goes into a full suit until you actually do one. I had done a lot of props before doing this suit and I still was blown away by the work. Next was covering the entire suit in a one-to-one -one mixture of acetone and U-pull spot putty. I plan on doing a super detailed video on how I make my mixture and how I apply it to 3D printed props. So make sure to subscribe so you can see that video when it comes out. This step also took me a long time to do. It was actually pretty shocking. It was about a week of work where you're mixing up small batches of that product and I would brush it over the entire suit almost like I was painting the suit because I didn't want it to pull up in an area. So you don't wanna just glop it on. I wanted to do thin coats. So I had to actively watch where I was painting it and that took time. Next step, we are back to sanding. I don't like sand. It's coarse, and rough, and irritating. The next grit was 120 to knock down that putty layer. In this sanding step, I wasn't trying to remove all of that putty. I was trying to leave it in the low spots, the little dips and imperfections. You're not trying to remove all of that product off of there. After sanding 120 grit, it was time for filler primer. And if you watch any of my videos, you know I say do whatever filler primer you like, whether it be Rust-Oleum, Duplicolor. This time I used a completely different one, but whatever filler primer is available to you and the cheapest, go for that. I tried to learn a new skill set in this one. I bought an HVLP setup, one of those automotive spray guns, and I sprayed a four to one high build primer. I do think that kind of primer was overkill for this. You definitely can do the rattle cans and it'd be easier having to clean the gun and then also doing a bunch of mixtures of four to one in like five ounce increments over an entire suit took so long to do. Rattle cans would be very easy. When you're painting a full suit, you have to think about how you're going to get all of those pieces off of the ground. I used a lot of my helmet stands. If you've seen that tutorial, it's a paper towel roll and a foam football. I used solo cups. I added buckles so I could hang it from the ceiling of my little spray booth. So you have to go in ahead and get that set up before you start painting. So that way you don't have all these pieces laying down on the ground. What are you going to do after it's wet and you know where are you going to put it? 
after the filler primer layer was done, I then used Bondo Spot Putty to go through and look for small tiny voids or imperfections and brush that onto it. Now I was about to do a lot of wet sanding, so I actually got a big tote and filled that up with my garden hose, filled that up with water out in my garage. I used to wet sand in my tub, but with a project this big, I couldn't be taking a bunch of these pieces into my tub, so I brought it out to the garage and made a little setup out there. When you go to do this wet sanding, wear some gloves or something like that, some rubber gloves, because your hands are gonna get so soggy and soft, the sandpaper can just take the skin right off. There's a few days where I've done this days back to back to back, hours after hours, and it just kind of ripped through my fingerprints. My fingers hurt. Oh, well, oh, now your back's gonna hurt because you just pull landscaping duty. Mm. Anybody else's fingers hurt? The first grit I did was 220 grit. And again, that's wet sanding. It helps you get the debris out of the sandpaper and it gets this thing starting to get really nice and smooth. When you're wet sanding, you're not trying to dig into it. You're just kind of trying to make everything nice and even, going over that kind of Bondo layer that you just did and getting everything nice and smooth. After 220, I went right into 320 and sanded the entire suit again. Now I'd recommend going straight into 400 grit wet sanding as well. For me, I actually did a what's called a guide coat. I sprayed sandable primer over top of the entire suit to kind of see what the suit was looking like. And then that way when I was sanding 400 that I could see where I had sanded. And after well over a month of time of sanding and processing and all that, it's finally time to actually paint. I started by painting the entire suit a flat gray primer by Rust-Oleum. I wanted to get the suit completely one color so that all the colors laid and they didn't change how they looked through each other. Now this is when I harnessed the suit. I had it all gray primered and then I started working on it. Like I said, I would have harnessed in the very beginning. I recommend that you guys do that much earlier on before even painting the primer. You're gonna scratch things up as you're kind of like manipulating them and getting them attached to each other. So I had to go back and wet sand a little bit then re-spray gray primer. You wouldn't have to do that if you did that earlier on. Now it's time for some real color. I tried another new technique with this. I actually airbrushed for the first time on the suit, which is super scary to do after you've worked so hard on something for so long to then try a new technique was definitely scary. I used Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal because I wanted a darker silver for this suit. Originally I was going to use a Krylon rattle can of Gunmetal, but it was too sparkly, so I decided to go with that Vallejo Model Air. If you want to stick with rattle cans, Dupacolor makes a color match and they have some really nice dark metal colors. This here was actually sprayed with a Dupacolor color match and this Gunmetal looks really amazing and it's nice and dark, so I easily could have gone this route, but the airbrush worked well for me. I kept saying in the beginning like how many times I was shocked at how long it would take to do a step. Masking the silver took forever. So after it was cured, I then had to mask that off with 3M automotive tape and that took probably a solid 10 hours to go through and neatly go through every bit of metal on the suit, getting it all in nice and cut to shape and really getting it in there, making sure the edges were nice. You have to be very detailed with it and it takes a long time to tape a full suit. With the silver pieces masked off, I then used a Rust-Oleum Cranberry to get a really nice burgundy. If you look at Captain America Civil War, he has a darker colored suit. It's not that bright red, it's a dark burgundy and I really wanted to go for that. So I got a Rust-Oleum Cranberry and I used that to spray the suit. I did two coats 10 minutes apart to get really good coverage with that red. After the red was done, I let that cure for two days and then I had to tape it all off to just leave the gold parts behind. Then I used Rust-Oleum Gold to paint the pieces that were gonna be gold. When I pulled off the masking, everything came out perfect. It was looking absolutely amazing, which made the next part even scarier. It was time to clear coat and I was gonna to try to do another new product as well. Usually I use Dupacolor 1K clear coat and I love the results of that but with it being $20 a can, and I was going to need a ton of cans, whether it be seven, eight, nine cans, uh, it was going to take multiple coats, and gosh, with how much product could have been used, it was going to be $160, $180 to be able to do just the clear coat. Whereas if I use the Speed Coat 2K Clear, an even stronger and more durable clear coat, an automotive finished clear coat, it was only gonna cost me $100 for that gallon and hardener to spray through the HVLP. So I had to kind of weigh that out. Would I wanna go with something I was familiar with or get the stronger, more durable finish 
and you know it'd be cheaper but this late in the game it's super scary to try a new technique like that so i decided to do that 2k clear coat and push my boundaries and try a new technique i painted five pieces at a time and i did three layers of that clear coat i did a very light dusting first i would let that dry for about five minutes and then i would do a medium wet coat and then while that was drying for another five to seven minutes i would take a tack cloth and wipe down five new pieces that i would bring out and I'd spray a heavier coat on those five pieces, put it in the booth and start with the next one. Again, when using an HVLP setup, you have to mix it in small batches. It takes a lot of time and then you also have to clean the gun afterwards. So it is a lot of work, but cost wise, I really had to do it. And I think that that 2K gloss coat really took that burgundy red up a notch. It made it look way better than just a regular spray paint. And it came out looking amazing. I tell you how I did the electronics here, but these are just the little cosplay LEDs off of Amazon with a little switch in there. And then that's a dollar store puck light that I put in there as well. So I don't have a tutorial on motorization yet. I haven't got that figured out, but I will have a tutorial for you there. But that's the only reason I'm not really showing just the LED eyes with a battery pack and just the chest puck light with a battery pack. One of the coolest parts about finishing this project was I actually got to unveil it at Fan Expo Chicago and do a photo shoot with suit up photography. He captured amazing pictures of this. I felt like I was in a Marvel movie. These pictures are unreal and it just, gosh, it was so rewarding to see these pictures after putting in so much work into this suit. Nick, you're absolutely the best man. Thank you so much. Making an Iron Man suit has been so rewarding and just so amazing. Honestly, the community is super awesome when you're making a suit as well. Thank you to everybody who let me pick your brain while I was working on my suit. If I had a little question here or there from people who have already made suits like Third Dimension Builds, Rogues Gallery Cosplay, Frankly Built, Perfect Perry. If I had questions about HVLP setups and things like that, you guys were fantastic. The community is there to help you. So feel free to ask questions. If you're going to build a suit, there's so much resources out there for you now including all of my tutorials and my whole build process. I have videos for everything. Hopefully this shows you what it's like to tackle a huge project like this and gives you advice and what you need to get into your own suit, whether that be an Iron Man or a full suit of anything else, a Batman suit, a Robocop suit. I hope this really helps you. This will not be my last full suit. We're definitely going to be doing other big projects like this as well. Let me know in the comments below what's your favorite Marvel movie or what kind of projects you're working on right now. Thanks for following along and watching with this. You guys are the backbone of the channel. It means everything to me and it really helps me out. Like, comment, subscribe. All of those things really help the channel grow and we've been booming over here. I love you guys so much and I hope you guys are excited to see more projects and I'm excited to see what you guys are making as well. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Catch another video after this. Love you guys. Peace.